A while back, Dinner Forked Tongue said, Hey man, can you review the C8? Or Kate, as flashlight people call it. Okay, no, they don't actually call it that. Sorry, he said, could you review it? And since I have no chill, I said yeah, and got to it six months later. The new Convoy C8 is an updated spin on a C8, a specific style light made by many Chinese manufacturers for many years now. It's denoted by its big reflector, and it takes a single 18650 lithium-ion rechargeable battery. The new version from Convoy is different because it uses a sexy clear anodized aluminum finish. Yeah, I referred to a flashlight as sexy. Has a slightly updated internal design that allows for better heat disbursement when the light heats up, and an updated firmware that gives you a lot of choices for user interfaces by using a firmware called Biscotti, made by a decent human being that wants the world to have better flashlights, named Toy Keeper. And as far as I know, gets no financial gain to herself, even though she really deserves it. The C8 is popular among flashlight modders because of the potential to make it into a tiny super thrower and overdrive it, which is flashlight talk for a compact flashlight that has a far-reaching beam. But for this review, we'll look at it as an affordable under $25 pocket thrower, which is a good light for people who need to light up objects several hundred feet away in the dark clearly. Externally, you have a beautifully machined flashlight made out of aluminum. It uses an XPL high emitter, which is a good throwing emitter, and comes in four LED options, from warm to cool. Mine is the three version, which is a nice neutral light with just a tiny hint of off-white creaminess to the beam pattern. You can get a really warm version like the 7A, which should be orange-ish like older incandescent lights, or the best version for the highest output, of course, the cool white 1A tint. The light uses square cut threads on either end of the battery tube, which means the tail cap screwed on easily and cleanly. When you encounter good machining, you realize it. When you don't, you're like, this sucks. It uses a single 18650 battery. I found just about every battery I have tried works. Protected, unprotected, flat top or button top, because it has springs at either end. I use a Sanyo 18650GA 3500 milliamp hour high drain unprotected cell for the testing you see in this video. All right, so I used mode group two, which is five modes, and I enabled mode memory. You can see the mode grouping options by visiting Banggood's website. Check the video description for that link. Just scroll down the page there. First up is 0.1% of total output. Not quite as low as I like for a moonlight, but that's just my opinion because some people prefer more light in their low modes or moonlights. Then is 1%, a good useful low amount of light, excellent battery life. Then is 10%, then it jumps to 35%. And finally, high mode or 100% mode. You're probably thinking it jumps from 1% to 10% to 35 to 100. Those seem like odd mode spacings. Well, since our eyes don't perceive flashlight brightness levels quite like the percentages suggest, for example, 500 lumens doesn't look half as bright as 1,000 lumens. Something more like 25% would look half as bright, or 250 lumens. Proper mode spacing is a spirited topic of debate among flashlight people, just so you know. There's been many threads written about it. You're like, uh, I didn't want to know that. I'm just here so I don't get fined. Fair enough. The user interface or UI, or how the flashlight operates. Remember when I said Banggood's website, you know, look at it for mode spacing? Well, you have many options for this light. Please don't get overwhelmed. If you're tactical, you can enable strobes. Unless you're like me, which is so tactical that I don't need strobes because I am the strobe. You can make it a one mode, 100% of output light for loaning to complete idiots. Or maybe you're the idiot. I'm not calling you an idiot. I'm just saying maybe some idiots happen to watch this channel. And you're like, or run it. So basically, operation is super simple. Even though the person who programmed it is a genius, you don't have to be a flashlight genius or scientist to operate it. You press it once fully to turn it on and half presses while it's on advanced modes. With mode memory enabled, you can turn it off and turn it on and a half a second later without advancing mode memory. So like you click it off and you click it back on, 
you know, like a quarter of a second or half a second and it won't advance. Some flashlights do make you wait a full two to three seconds before turning it back on if you didn't want to advance to the next mode. Let's see, so in my case, half presses go through the five modes, like from low to high and looping back again. See, it's super easy. Programming requires some proper button presses. It took me a few minutes to get it right, but chill. If you play video games or have a gambling habit with electronic slot machines, you got this. To get into programming, turn it on. Now do really quickly 10 or more half presses, basically until the light stops changing modes. Then you'll know you're in it. And then you have two options at this stage. You can turn the mode memory on or off, or you can get into the mode group selection. I wouldn't call it programming is turning on options, you know, with a few button presses. So to get into the mode section menu, you wait for the first blink after it stopped going after the 10 presses, and then it flickers. All right. So you do a half press when it flickers for the first time, and it starts blinking. And uh, it'll go one. It'll be a pause, and it'll go one, two. It'll be a pause, and it'll go one, two, three. And eventually, you'll get to 12 blinks. Now, if you get to Banggood's product page, you'll see that it tells you what 1 through 12 mode grouping is. So there's a quite a few options. So if I want mode group whatever the hell, I wait until the light blinks that many times when I'm in programming mode and then just turn it all the way off. I waited for the second blink succession and then I turned it off because I like mode group 2 the best. No blinks, five modes, it gives me moonlight and a high and a few modes in between. Now, if you miss on your blink, it will repeat after the final 12 blink succession sequence. So um, just wait it out. So just a quick recap. To program, turn it on, 10 or more quick button pre half presses. Stops changing modes, blink, flicker, another half press, and then you're into mode selection. Now, to enable mode memory, you, again, turn it on, do 10 quick mode presses, and then it stops advancing modes. Now you wait not after the first flicker, because if you hit it right after the first flicker, it gets you into mode selection. If you could wait to the second one, it turns mode memory on or off. Now I don't know what the light is set to from the factory, so you'll have to test it out to enable or disable it after you turn it off. So you'll have to check it. Sorry, the world's not perfect. Run times, the part everyone's been waiting for. I did 100%, 35%, and 10%. I used an unprotected cell and found the light has low voltage protection. I checked voltage after each test, and it was about 2.65 volts, or a little higher. First is 100%. There's very subtle dimming that's happening here initially, but no big step down. At about 33 minutes in, it starts dimming a little more, and the battery voltage is, of course, dropping. It continues to 1 hour and 28 minutes before a hard bump down in brightness and a pretty substantial dimming until 1 hour and 44 minutes, before it hits a low mode, and then a moonlight mode at 2 hours and 24 minutes, and then it just keeps going and going and going and going. And at 6 hours and 50 minutes, the light turns off. I didn't wait that long for the next, which is 35%. It runs 1 hour and 35 minutes before you start seeing a very subtle drop in brightness. Then it just gets dimmer over the next 3 hours before dropping down a few times, starting at the 3 hour and 55 minute mark. I ended the test at 5 hour and 55 minutes with moonlight levels of lumens coming out that sounded awkward i'm sure had i left it on longer it would have cut off just like it did earlier on the high mode next is 10 percent. you see a very subtle drop in brightness over the first five hours then it picks up slightly as voltage in the battery depletes and at 13 hours and 34 minutes it hits a low mode and then at 14 hours and 46 minutes it drops down even further i ended the test at 17 hours and one minute which you'll see here in a second, but I'm going to talk a little bit while I do this. I feel it's pretty safe to use an unprotected cell because it never dropped below 2.5 volts. Cell health, battery cell health, is always best above 3 volts for lithium ion stuff. Some people say in the mid-3s. I'm not going to argue that. But Steve Culver reminded me to remind you that anything below 2.5 volts in a lithium ion battery isn't considered safe and will damage your cell's ability to hold voltage reliably and could possibly catch on fire is what people say if you abuse yourselves a lot. You can look for videos on the internet. I've never had that. And if you just want to feel safe and you don't believe me and you don't believe the light about low voltage protection, it will have no problem taking a protected cell. 
Okay, beam shot fools. These are the lights I'll be comparing the C8 to. I have reviewed most of these lights, so please go check those videos out so I get the clicks. Remember, if you like my channel, the way it gets bigger is to watch my videos all the way through, watch the ones you haven't, give them a thumbs up and comment. I appreciate all you guys do, even the subscriber who regularly thumbs down my videos. Guess what? That counts as engagement. It helps my video too, so thank you. First is the C8, the throwiest light in the bunch, but it's actually the least bright. How does that work? Well, the candela is the highest out of all, so the beam will reach further into the dark. But you knew that because you watched my last video about candela and lumens, and you know that candela is how far it throws and lumens is how bright it is. And that they're kind of related, but also work independently of one another. Just because a light is bright doesn't mean the light travels far. That's the candela thing. Then is the Astrolux SS. It uses the same emitter and battery and is about the same size. So why isn't the candela or throw higher? Because the reflector is smaller, fool. And other guy's like, I knew that because I watched that candela video, like the last one he did. Back to the C8. Very dim spill, so you can barely see it, but it has that hot spot. Look at that. Now the Claris XT11S. So tactical. Much less throwy than the last lights, but sometimes you need less contrasty hot spots and slightly brighter spill for closer range stuff. Like gun stuff. Now back to the pinpoint of light known as the C8. Look at that. It's like it's burning a hole through the trees. Or, or not. Boom. Now the least throwy, the Sunway Man D40A. A more general purpose light for closer ranges. Again, throwers are kind of specialty lights. Lights with 80,000 candela like the C8 are better suited if you need to spot stuff in the distance most of the time. They work well as general purpose lights too, but I carry throwerless less personally because a lot of my light usage is indoors. Um, and I don't like that bright hot spot when I'm looking at stuff, you know, a few feet away from me. Now the Meteor, so bright. But again, the C8's light should travel further because it's higher candela. It's okay to like both lights, but for different reasons. You know, like your kids. Sorry, they're not watching, are they? We've got time for the Convoy L6, right? It's three times as bright, but the candela is lower. So of course the hotspot is gonna be less intense and wider with much brighter spill light. Remember the best throwers at closer ranges have tighter hotspots like the C8. Less candela is a wider, less intense hotspot and more spill provided of course the light you're comparing it to is brighter, meaning more lumens. Okay, how about a comparison between the C8 and a light from one of my more popular videos. I originally had this in the beam shot section but I didn't shine the light in the correct spot and, you know, I have limited time, so I didn't do the whole beam shot section over because of that. So we'll do this in the basement. It illustrates why the C8 is a better outdoor light, and the BLFA6 is better for the indoor, everyday carry type thing. When looking at objects closer to your person, it's easier to look at a more dispersed beam pattern like the BLFA6 puts out. Because the hotspot is so high contrasty on the C8 at close ranges. So... C8, if you're checking your property for critters or Sasquatch at night, or government agents, and then the BLF A6 for indoor tenderfoot stuff like this guy right here. Watch that video, you know, while you're at it, the BLF A6. Okay, wrapping it up. The C8 is a very budget light at $25. A decent battery will set you back another couple bucks, and a good charger about $10. It's a nice thrower, but not too bright, not too overdriven. A good solid recommendation if you need a nice outdoor long range ish light that'll go to the tops of the biggest trees and spot stuff up to a few hundred feet out. Remember, even though it says meters in my beam shot section under, you know, right next to the candela, real world throw is less. An 80,000 candela light wouldn't be sufficient enough much past 500 feet if you wanted to see an object very brightly. Remember my video, the K7, my ultimate thrower? that my 3000 lumen Convoy L6 was having trouble lighting up a tree over 700 feet away with 70,000-ish candela. Of course our eyes are more sensitive than our cameras, so I could see that light with my eyes a little bit better than my camera could, but still it struggles past about 700 feet, especially if it's a humid night. So, you know, try to use your C8, you know, under 500 feet and you'll be happy. 
The C8 is waterproof to IPX8 standards, so rain, snow, and shallow submersion, provided you keep your O-rings on your light lube with non-petroleum base flashlight lube, it should stay waterproof. Banggood provided this light for review. You can buy it through the links below to support this channel. Unless you're broke, or you know, you just don't have to buy every single thing you see some idiot review on YouTube. Thanks for watching Advanced Flashlight Bros. And I forgot to mention, no visible PWM was detected on any mode, although I'm pretty sure this light does use high frequency PWM. But my camera and my eyes couldn't pick it up, so you're good to go.